Want an electric car? What about this one? Or this one? What about this one? They're looking cool, aren't they? Even Will Ferrell's advertising them. Fucking sell out. EVs are here to save the day, like Streethawk and Knight Rider. We don't like breathing in dinosaur petrol fumes, so we've started to look at other stuff, and lo and behold, all these fuckers have a car to flog us. And we're at this point with electric cars where it's starting to tip over. It's starting to get this mainstream awareness of buying because of Muskie. And the big boys and girls have bought in, they've all got their electric car agenda, governments of their timelines. We're on this path that electric cars are the environmental Jesus of the modern era. They're gonna save us from all our pollution sins. But maybe we're getting a bit carried away with Elon Musk and the Mardi Gras following behind him. So I wonder three main things. How much difference will converting all cars to electric actually make? What will the landscape look like for us once the conversion is done? Will Elon remain king of the EVs? Okay, so according to this Thomson Reuters study, the automotive sector is believed to contribute somewhere between 15 and 25% of polluting emissions. That's an annoying differential of 10%, so not as accurate as it could be, but let's go for the maximum amount. That's a quarter of the world's pollutants are from cars. Now, not every country is gonna be able to respond quickly and, and completely revamp their vehicle infrastructure. India, Africa, I'm talking to you guys. Yeah, I call them guys because I'm a massive sexist. These huge areas of population are, are still developing, so they're gonna take longer than more developed countries. By the way, that's not necessarily their fault. If other countries hadn't gangbanged them about 100 years ago, they'd probably be doing a lot better. England, Belgium, I'm talking to you. In 1997, Toyota came out with a shit looking car, which was a hybrid and was a step forward, part electric, part petrol, and now all the annoying dickhead Uber drivers drive them today. And just stop anywhere to pick and drop people off and annoy the fuck out of everyone else. Regardless, it was a good response by Toyota to make this car as an awareness of the pollution thing. What's quite funny is how the car blew up in notoriety. All the actors started driving them because they took responsibility. I take responsibility. He took responsibility. <laughs> So flash to today and the government are now banning the sale of regular powered cars all around the world. UK has a deadline by 2035, 2040, depending where you read it. Norway, 2025. India, Israel, Netherlands, 2030. Reuters reckon there'll be a subsequent massive reduction in tailpipe emissions by 2050. So 30 years. Enough time to invent a new global technology where you could learn Spanish, book a flight to Mexico and use your new Spanish to buy some drugs. So this is fantastic news, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Well, as Dungeon Master says, There is a universal balance. If you bring water here to quench your thirst, you may be turning farmland into desert elsewhere. How fucking wise is that, eh? If all these electric cars are being made, we're gonna have a massive demand for certain materials to support the infrastructure. What farmland are we turning into desert elsewhere? And I love that program. <laughs> It's not quite as simple as just start doing this thing and then everyone's saved and the planet's saved and hooray. Remember what happened with mobile phones or cell phones as Americans call them. Presumably cell phones because loads of Americans end up in jail and they don't use the word mobile because of how fat they all are. Mobile phones got massively popular and now we need shitloads of material to be dug up and converted into a phone so that you can go on Instagram or play snake. For electric cars, as just one example, we're gonna need a load of cobalt because they're used in battery technology. You get cobalt from the Congo. Have you ever been to the Congo? I haven't, but I know it's fucked. It's a fucked place. You don't wanna go there for a holiday or to mine cobalt if you don't have to. Okay, I've said it's fucked. Maybe that's unfair. The correct term is a politically unstable country that is ranked 176 out of 187 on the United Nations Human Development Index. <laughs> What's his endgame? Well, we know he wants to die on Mars. We know about SpaceX and Tesla and, and the boring project, but I think it's Tesla energy that's his big one. I think that might be his true legacy because this is the one ring to rule them all. This is the thing that will support all the other things, the network of energy that will charge the cars, other vehicles, whatever else they invent, and 
perhaps at some point the rocket ships. Solar electric propulsion is something NASA has explored. Either way, once this becomes a viable energy network using solar technology, the world will be a very different place. Imagine waiting for your car to charge while you're getting Tesla cancer. Or imagine being able to go to war in a Tesla renewable energy tank and really give it to those commies, but also know that you're doing something good for the environment. However, here comes a new challenger. VW have spent the last few years developing a way of standardizing rollout of VW cars. They sold 9.3 million cars in 2020. Tesla sold about half a million. Okay, yeah, COVID, factories shut, all that sort of stuff. But there's still a huge gap of sales as well as all the VW history and customer support network. But saying that, this could all be irrelevant because if the Tesla energy system becomes more dominant, and overtakes the fossil fuel supply, that infrastructure will be the end game. So it's more the fact that Elon's name is associated with the car industry and what got things kicked off. But we're talking about the energy industry. That's what will have the biggest effect on the world. But there is a part of me that feels like everyone's listening to a cult leader. You know, like that guy who said he was gonna take everyone in his spaceship and then got them to kill themselves? Cause there's a massive section of diehard followers that have just bought into him as a person. Twats in your twenties, I'm talking to you. He does appear to be a force for good, but he's just a bloke and like any person, prone to mistakes or corruption from power. I don't think we'll know about negative global effects until we're further down the line. And by that time, Elon might be dead on Mars. And then we're just left with the cretins and egomaniacs that govern our society. But anything you s No, but if you fail to mention something <laughs> which you later rely on, hang on, let's get this right. Unless of course Elon's kid grows up with the same brain and drive as him, and then it's all hail president of the earth, Darth XIA12. Oh hi, welcome to my window. This is where I like to come and really mull things over. One of the things I was mulling was, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, then I can keep taking the piss out of Belgium. You have a great whatever fucking day it is.